Craig Hammer, Valentine, WWE Hall of Fame. This is professional wrestler Jimmy Vines on Pokemon Command. This is Michael Strider, Rock and Roll Photographer. Jake Blake. Hey, this is Mikey. Hi, this is Ned Baby. This is the bluest man up in the north. Little Bobby. Hi, this is Hank Braxton from Braxton.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we're listening to Frankie Slauson's show on Pioneer 90.1. I'm about to be a with Frankie Slauson on Pioneer 90.1. The Frankie Slauson Show, a place where the legends and up-and-coming celebrities are not afraid to talk. Right here on the Search for More Celebrity Interviews, the Frankie Slauson Show on Pioneer 90.1. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the uh, second episode, my best step for the Frankie Slauson Show. And uh, coming to me all the way from Honolulu, Hawaii, or just Hawaii itself, <laughs> A legendary guy, Don Stroud. Welcome to the show. How are you, my dear friend? Aloha and mahalo. Well, thank you. Same to you, too. <laughs> Good deal. Uh, now, for those of you who have no idea who Don Stroud is, if you remember, and this is probably just a keynote just on my part, but uh, also on, on his, uh, he was the drummer. He played the, he played the character Jesse on the Buddy Holly story. And, and besides all that, he's done other things as well. <laughs> he's been in uh, many different TV shows. He's been in lots of movies, like Arm and Dangerous and all that. And uh, it's great to have you on the show. Well, thank you so much. I've done over 100 films. I'm a character actor, and, uh, you know, I was always waiting for those leading parts, and I decided to become a character actor and do the second and third leads. I did over 100 films and over 250 television shows. Did all the Aaron Spelling shows and Charlie's Angels and all those great shows, Hawaii Five O and Streets of San Francisco. And I did many films with Clint Eastwood. I did Joe Kidd and Cougar's Bluff with Clint Eastwood. And uh, I had a pretty good career playing character actors. So I'm glad that it turned out to be that way. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, you, you made a, a mark in the entertainment history. No doubt about that. Well, I got a chance to play the bad guy, you know. And I figured, oh, here I am playing the bad guy. And all of a sudden, I found myself working all the time. I said, wait a minute, this isn't such a bad deal. Because usually when I get the part on Hawaii Five O and stuff as the bad guy, it was the lead part of the show. So I started playing these parts, and it just worked out really good for me. And I've had a great career. I've just semi-retired. I'm living in Hawaii now, my favorite place where I was born and raised. And uh, there's a new show over here called Lost. I'm sure you're all yeah, very yeah. aware of it. It's actually been on there for a couple of years now. I might be on that. I'm working on some stuff on that, but the right part has to come up yet. And then there's a great actor over here named Andy Bumatai, who's a comedian. We're working on a sitcom over here, a little half-hour sitcom called Waikiki. It would be a couple of old beach boys, because we're old now. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was a young beach boy, and I'm from the beach. I was fourth in the world surfing, and you know, I, 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 I'm a water man all my life. I grew up on Waikiki Beach when there was just a... If you folks know the old days, I'm sure some of your listeners would know about them. There's the, just the Royal, the Moana, the Surf Rider, the Halakalani was there. And we used to have great days on Waikiki, and where it was just the co eds came over in the summertime, and the wintertime was quite quiet over here, you know? Oh, yeah. And now it's busy all the time. It's become a pretty big, pretty big city over here now, you know? Oh, yeah. But uh, I started, they were doing a show called Hawaiian Eye. Oh, yeah. Troy Donahue and Ponchi Ponce and Connie Stevens and Troy Donahue couldn't surf and we were sitting there watching him shoot one day and the producer said, do you know how to surf? I said, oh, I can surf real good. And that time I had the blonde hair and I was 6'2 and I doubled for Troy Donahue who was just a great friend of mine who passed away. He was a, he was a really good guy and he just passed away. So I doubled for him surfing with Bob Conrad and I and uh, I did that for quite a few years and I got the bug to go to Hollywood and try out for some things and Ended up parking cars at the Whiskey Go-Go, world famous Whiskey Go-Go over there, and then I became a bouncer over there for a while, and then I became the manager of the club. And it was great days. We had Janis Joplin and the Doors and the Birds and oh, all the groups from San Francisco. We had the Who and Jimi Hendrix and just the best of the best were over there. Oh, uh, that, that's uh, that's amazing, you know. Uh, you, you yeah. talk about you being a, a, a surfer or whatnot. Now, are you familiar, and, and this goes around your, your time, and, and well, well, especially when you made your peak in the business with the, like, the Lords of Dive Town and the Deep Boys from California at all? What, what about, can I say it again? I didn't get it. The, the Z Boys from California? Oh, the Z Boys, the surfer yeah. and roll group? Oh, sure, they were great. When I grew up with Dick Dale and those guys and wipe out and da 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 you know, all that great stuff. And I, when I lived in California, I served Malibu quite a bit, a place called Rincon. But it's 
nothing like Hawaii. The water over here in Hawaii is really special. A place called Sunset Beach, Makaha, Haleiwa, Waimea Bay, and of course the Bonsai Pipeline. No, no, no. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Uh, the the Z I'm talking, not, not the band, I'm talking like the, uh, the you talk about being a surfer uh, yeah. when you're starting out. Uh, these guys were surfers that became popular skateboarders in California. Oh, the skateboarding group. Yeah, yeah. They might have been a little after my time. You know, when I was surfing, we had the long boards without any okay. and all that stuff, you okay. know, before the short boards and stuff. There wasn't a lot of skateboarders around now. Now, all the skateboarders are incredible. You know, the new skateboarders, they're making them out of bamboo. Uh, yeah. A little bit of a gift to them. And these kids, you wouldn't believe some of the things they're doing. They're riding down these rails, down these steps, and flipping over. And, I mean, they're incredible. They're just incredible, these skateboarders. I really uh, I really think they got a lot of guts to what they're doing. It's become a, become a great sport, especially in Hawaii. <laughs> Well, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, now I'm going to ask you a few questions about your career. Sure. And, uh, uh, to start off, because this is where I know you from, especially, I've never met you, but I'm just saying, uh, the Buddy Holly story. Now, I always said if I ever had the chance to talk to you or meet you or whatever, I would ask you, how did you land the role as the drummer in that movie? Well, first of all, I've played drums all my life. To get the part, you would have had to play drums because... We played all the music live. I hope everybody knows that. Yeah. Gary Busey sang, Charlie Martin, I, Charlie Martin Smith played bass, and I played drums. That was all live music. We recorded it right then and there. A lot of people say, well, wasn't that Buddy Holly? Well, no, Buddy Holly didn't have, he had hi-fi and all that stuff. Yeah. It would have, would have sounded ridiculous to record his stuff. So Gary actually did all the singing. We played the music live right there. But I, I played drums all my life. I'm percussion. I played congos, bongos, okay. timbales. I played the ukulele now, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to be able to play just to get the part, which made it a great movie. You know, it, I thought the bongo was a good movie and yeah. a few of those, but I thought Buddy Holly was one of the best kind of homegrown rock and roll movie. You know, it wasn't any violence or any where it really represented Lubbock, Texas, in the old days where we were all kind of rogues that we wore our, our blue jeans down low, yeah. we kind of roll our cuffs up on our t-shirts and stuck the pack of cigarettes in our arm, you know, and yeah, yeah. those were good days, the blue suede shoes and, you know, Levi jackets and, you know, to be a gang member there, you, you were a small little small club and things, you know what I mean, yeah. I wouldn't go out killing people like it is now. Terrible these new gangs, but yeah. what are you going to do? Life goes on right now, you know. Yeah. But it was wonderful days. I think we really captured. I think we really captured the fifties in the Buddy Holly story. And I think Gary Busey was wonderful. He lost the Academy Award to uh, to Al Pacino. I think it was for Dog Day Afternoon. It was yeah. a, a brilliant performance. Or it was uh, Robert De Niro. I can't remember which one it was, but it was a really fine actor that beat him up. But I thought Gary was terrific. He did all that singing live. He, he really played Buddy Holly for the folks that have seen this movie. And the ones that haven't, it's a great movie to rent because it's a really good new, uh, movie. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's a movie that has a good story. And, uh, and you know, in, in some respect, too, uh, a lot of people, you know, when, when I would talk about that movie with uh, other people, they, they would say, like, it does tell the whole story, you know? What's your reaction to that? Well, how much can you tell of a story? You could go on for days and days doing a story. You get you get the best of the best. It didn't show much uh, leading up to the plane crash and all that. It just brought us to the airport and you heard the bad news and stuff. We could have carried on and showed the plane crash and all that. We could have showed more about the big bopper and Richie Valen. But I think we captured the kids in Texas when they were young and becoming a rock and roll group and they... Uh, the American Bandstand, the Ed Sullivan Show, and I think we captured all those old shows pretty good because I remember being a kid myself watching Buddy Holly on American Bandstand, the Ed Sullivan Show, and he was like a, he was my hero, you know, when oh, yeah. Jack Domino was there and Little Richard was there, and a little before Elvis Presley actually, and then Elvis Presley came along and stuff. You know, I'm 63 now, so I was right in that, right in that era. With the, I think some of the best rock and roll in the world in my days, you know. And uh, well, that that that, that explains uh, that, mm -hmm. that part for now. Or the Buddy Holly story. And uh, did you ever happen to see Paul McCartney's version of the real Buddy Holly story? You know, I don't think I did. I'd like to see that. What, what was it a feature? Was it a yeah, documentary? Yeah, it's a uh, it's.
it's a documentary from, uh, I believe, 1987. It was like 10 years or, or nine years after the Buddy Holly sort of movie that you were in. You know, I'm going to look for that. I'm going to look for that because I'd love to see it. I think he, he owned all the music rights. Michael Jackson might own them, but I think Paul McCartney at one time, he owned all those music rights, too, of Buddy Holly, which was some great stuff and some great songs. You know, Peggy Sue and Not Fade Away and uh, True Love Ways. And he did some really, really great. He was a great writer also. Oh, yeah. He, uh, very talented guy and whatnot. But, uh, but uh, now, uh, another film that he's been in, you also been, was it, were in a film called uh, James Bond, Licensed to, to Kill. License to Kill. Well, it, it wasn't one of the greatest James Bond. It was Timothy Dalton. It was a great deal to do a James Bond. You know, your agent called up and said, you want to go to Acapulco for 20 weeks and be in a James Bond film. I mean, I couldn't wait to go because it's a wonderful credit for an actor to be in such a prestige film. Plus, they pay you pretty good money, so oh, yeah. you go the business to make money. And it was a great payday for me. It was a good part, and, and uh, I would have taken the part no matter what it was just to be in the James Bond. But it was a small part that I turned into a fairly decent part, the part of Heller. Yeah. And he was Robbie Dog uh, Do uh, Robert Dog's bodyguard, and uh, we sure had a lot of fun doing that. We shot that in Acapulco in Mexico City, and they traveled real good with Lear Jets, and uh, the stuntmen were incredible on that movie. Those guys, they were hanging from airplanes and jumping off cliffs, and you wouldn't believe some of the stunts that were in that movie. So it was a lot of fun just to do that movie, you know, and I enjoyed doing it. Now, that's one of the movies I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen all the James Bond movies, but I, I, I definitely want to. <laughs> well, you can rent it. It's out for rent. Like oh, I, yeah. say, I don't think, I still have a Sean Connery fan from the old days of yeah. James Bond. I always felt that he was James Bond, and nobody kind of took his place. And, and, uh, and, and ours was a little different twist on James Bond. It was about drugs and things and smuggling drugs and all that. And James Bond comes to the rescue and all that. But, you know, the film made a lot of money, and that's the main thing nowadays in show business. If you make a good film and nobody goes to see it, it doesn't make any money. It's, yeah. it's fun, but if you don't make any money, you, you know, you got to show your film. And then, so the film made a lot of money. And, Everybody had a good payday on it, and I'm really glad I did it, that's for sure, because it's, like I say, it's a terrific credit. And basically, you could say you made your mark in history, because it'll, it'll be lived forever in film, you know? Well, the film plays all the time, you know, we get a little residual on that, too, which is real nice, and uh, yeah, like I say, doing the James Bond thing, you're, it, it puts you in a little select club that, that yeah. I think is great, like doing the Clint Eastwood film. Oh, yeah. There's only so many Clint Eastwood films, I did two of them, yeah. and I'm really happy I did them, because they play all the time on television. It's like the Buddy Holly, it plays all the time on HBO, and yeah. Yeah. It's, played all, it's played all over the world. I have a website, www.dodstrive.com. That, that, that I get letters from all over the world from, I'm talking about the Philippines and China and all that because of Buddy Holly and yeah. Clint Eastwood movies and, and Armin Dangerous with John Candy. Yeah. So a lot of times doing a, being a character actor and doing films with, 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 with stars like that, you, you'll play the whole world. You'll play it over and over and over. And my television credits are the same way, the Hawaii Five O's and Streets of San Francisco and, yeah, yeah. you know, the Simon is Simon and Cannon and yeah. Marcus Welby and Charlie's Angels. You know, those shows are going to go out for a long Oh, uh, Mr. T. What was Mr. T? Uh, uh, it was the A-Team. The A-Team. Yeah. Oh, those shows will go on for the next 10, 10 years. And oh, yeah. And fly with me because they play, you know, and it keeps you, keeps you out there because I'm basically retired. But yeah. like I say, since I've been retired, all these things are coming my way. I'm producing a, a show in Hawaii right now called Good Morning Hawaii. Yeah. Then, you know, we 
can have like tidal waves and our little problems too. Yeah. It's like everywhere else in the world, but you but then you bang you close up the window and head on, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about all you can do because it's definitely paradise over here. I, I love living over here. I mean right now it's eighty five degrees and the trees which are blowing and the sun is just uh it's about three thirty here, quarter to four. And it's really, really nice over here. I'm, I just love living here. We go to the main line. I go to the mainland once in a while to uh, to do some work. Yeah. And then I can't wait to get home. So I'm here to retire and hopefully to stay here. And, uh, well, you talk about it being 85 degrees over where you're at. It's below one degree over here. Yeah, yeah it's chilly back. Where, now, where are you calling from? Uh, East Cooper Falls, Minnesota. You're from Minnesota. Oh, I love the Vikings. Hey, where's the Vikings this year? My favorite team. <laughs> yeah. Not playing as good as they should. I yeah. love the Vikings. I always have. I like Green Bay and the Vikings. Oh, it is. I like all those teams over there. They've got a great team, though. Oh, yeah. I've been to Minnesota on a, a few tours. And okay. I, we, we, we did Bloody Mama with Shelly Winters. We, we went all through Texas and Minnesota yeah. and up there in uh, Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> 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 Uh, Green Bay and LA, yeah. we were all up around in Ohio, you know. And it was great to see that part of the world, you know. Now, uh, would you, uh, would you be the, a legendary actor or whatnot? Have you, uh, entered your, are you a part of the Hall of Fame at all for anything? Well, I'll tell you what Hall of Fame I'm in, and I'm very proud of. I became the Black Belt Hall of Flank Hall of Fame. Okay. And uh, Katu Kembo Institute of Self Defense. I'm in the Hall of Fame there. And as far as, uh, Hall of Fame of Actors. I have a lot of different little, a lot of different awards I, uh, that I've won through the years for for the different things I've done. But mostly I've gotten my awards for the amount of work. They say, "What's your favorite thing?" Well, I did over 100 films and over 250 television shows, and I had a few awards for that at different dinners. But as far as the Hall of Fame of Actors, you know, I'm still pretty young, you know. Maybe uh, down the line, I don't know. You know, when I was like I said, I'm a character actor. Uh, I'm not a star star, but I'm surprised since I've had my website how many people do know my work and it's kinda nice to get letters from all around the world and oh, Christmas yeah. cards from people yeah. they don't know and stuff and they always say they appreciated the work and uh, it's kinda fun. Well see that, that that's how uh, that's what one of the reasons why I wanna do the interview with you so bad because I've done twelve other interviews with actual celebrities just like yourself whether they be yeah. character actors or professional wrestlers or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for what you do. And I'd like to say that just because of over the years. I, I have the honest most respect for, for you individually because you, you, you work pretty, you work really hard at what you do, and that's why you made a, a, a mark in, in the entertainment history. Well, it's not easy be, to do no, it. No, it's not easy. Making movies. I mean, you can make a few movies, but... You know, uh, the thing about it is most of the films I've done, I've been invited back by the same people. So that means you must have did a pretty good job to be invited back. Like Hawaii Five, I did four of those. Yeah. If you did a bad job, you would have done the one, and that would, would have been it. But it's really nice when they call you back and say, we'd like to do another show. Oh, sure. You know, Street San Francisco, I did that three or four times. And Charlie's Angels. Aaron Spelling was a big fan of mine. Yeah. And that's that's what really made me feel good with those when those guys like that wanted you back on their show and, and we're happy to have you back and yeah. good parts, you know what I mean? Really good good bad guys. Yeah. Man, you know. And I and then they know that people are very enjoy it because they even the fans probably uh, are part of the reason why they, they have you come back because they say, Hey, this guy has something here, you know. Well, it sure helps, let me tell you it helps. But I'll tell you it's not an easy business, man. No. The acting business is a tough, tough business, you know. And the problem is you you really have to be in New York or Hollywood. Yeah. There's not much, say in Minnesota or even Hawaii, there's, there's not much going on here. We're, we're making our own things here, you know yeah. what I mean? But there's very few things coming. I think Steven Spielberg's going to come here for the summer and do a little mini series and yeah. stuff like that. But down the line, there'll probably be more and more stuff here. But if you really want to make it, unfortunately, you do have to move out to Hollywood or, yeah. or New York. And New York is real tough, let me tell you. Because there's a lot of talented people in New York. Yes, it's, there are. it's a select club there where Los Angeles is a little more open. Yeah. And they come and go in Los Angeles, let me tell you. They come and go. Uh, definitely. That's what, that's what uh, the last interview I did last week with uh, Mickey Jones, he, he said that too because, you know, he, he became like a drummer or whatnot and, and sure. a actor and a you know, musician. And he said, if you got to make a mark, 
legal ID, but before I have you do that, uh, uh, now, okay, I'm just on your uh, internet movie database dot com. I was on there a few days ago, and I looked up your biography and all that, and because uh, I know a lot about you, you're more than, maybe you know about yourself, who knows? <laughs> anyway, uh <-huh. laughs> no, I'm the kid. Uh, 144 films you've been in, so. Uh, uh, in yeah, actually, movie, I did 100 movies over 250 television okay. shows. Well, it's a lot of work. It, well, well, the internet blue database it kind of combines everything that you've done. And, well, it kind of just says, uh, well, since you're beginning, your, your first movie, The Ballad of Josie, uh, compared to that first film that you did to the last film that you did, do you think that your life is pretty much complete? Probably, I mean, do you think that uh, the, the industry and your life with the industry has changed and well, I got a feeling something's right around the corner waiting for me because I'm getting these these, these offers to do things lately. I'm 63, yeah. and now I'm the dad. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I used to be the son, now I'm the dad. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of great parts out there for dads, and uh, I could even be grandpa now because I'm 63, but I'm in real good shape. I still surf and yeah. I go to the gym every day, and I study Tai Chi and martial yeah. arts and stuff. So I stay in good shape. I got a feeling I don't think it's over at all. No, I really don't. I, and if it is, I'm very happy about that too. But I'm wide open for action. Like I say, I'm retired, and an actor always lives check to check. You know, the acting business. One thing about the acting business: your last check is your last check. Oh yeah, yeah. You got to wait for your next job. You know, when yeah, you don't go yeah. to work every Monday. Yeah. So at least now I have my steady income, and it, it, it's nice. I like that because I have a great pension. Only because I work so much, that's why my pension is so good. Oh, uh, sure. But that's nice. But as far as being done, I don't think so at all. You know, there's, there's something out there waiting. The fun's just begun, huh? Well, I don't know if it's just begun, but uh, the best part about it is I don't have to pay the rent yeah. that way. Before, it was like, oh, my God, i got to get a job. i got to pay the rent. Yeah. And now the rent's paid, and if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, I'm not going to go shoot myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to, first of all, thank you. I'm not going to let you go yet, but I want to, first of all, thank you for, you know, this has just been a true honor. You know, you have no idea how great I feel for being able to talk to you and do an interview with you. you really well, it's have, my pleasure, man, my pleasure. You really, really have helped me out, and I, I hope I've helped you out in a big way. That Absolutely. You can, you can tell some of your friends and who knows who else, you know, that, hey, you know, this kid from Minnesota is doing interviews. And, well, you can give it a shot, you know. Okay, I'm going to turn you out to shoot my buddies. Oh, you got a few buddies over there, right? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll call them in the mail and have them call you. Okay. Uh, yeah, now, I'll, I'll, I'll set up some interviews for you. Oh, cool. And uh, now the last thing I want you to do is uh, give me a legal ID. It's say who you are, who you listen to, and what show or what station you listen to. Okay, now wait a minute. Now hang on here. Oh, okay. you got to let me. Okay. I know who I am, but let me yeah. write down that other information. Okay. So okay. what is it? Okay, it's Frankie Sloss. Frankie Slauson. Yeah, that's me. And uh, listen to the Frankie Slauson show on Pioneer 90.1. 90.1? Yep. Okay, go. All right, go ahead. Hi, this is Don Strauss.